Ahead on Current News, a number of local developments in the fight to stop the spread of the coronavirus. A state of emergency now in effect in New York City. Plus, the Archdiocese of New York announcing school closings. And in the Brooklyn Diocese, one parish and a Catholic academy are taking precautions in the wake of a suspected case of the virus. Plus, tough new restrictions by Governor Cuomo, restricting large gatherings, including Broadway shows. And one step closer on the road to sainthood for the parents of St. John Paul II. Currents News starts right now. Good evening, I'm Christine Persichetti. A lot of developments tonight regarding the spread of coronavirus. Mayor Bill de Blasio declaring a state of emergency in New York City, which means if needed, he can impose curfews and order closings. He says the city has 95 confirmed cases. The Archdiocese of New York is closing all Catholic elementary schools starting on Monday for the week and possibly longer. Also, all CYO and Catholic High School Athletic Association's activities, sporting events, and practices are canceled indefinitely. And this afternoon, Governor Andrew Cuomo announced large gatherings are now banned across the state. Uh, no gathering with 500 people or more. From zero to 500, we're reducing the occupancy by 50%. Uh, so 50% of your seated capacity is the new capacity for a facility. Those new uh, rules will go into effect 5 o'clock on Friday. These rules don't apply to schools, hospital, nursing homes, uh, mass transit facilities. Governor Cuomo also clarified that he and New York Cardinal Timothy Dolan agreed to postpone the St. Patrick's Day parade. In the Brooklyn Diocese, a parish and a Catholic academy are dealing with a suspected case of the virus. Current News' Tim Harfman is outside Our Lady Queen of Martyrs in Forest Hills with what's being done to keep students and parishioners safe. Tim. Christine, the academy and church are the first to close in Brooklyn or Queens, but right now the diocese doesn't have plans to shut any other schools. Officials here say that although it's a suspected case, they're not taking any chances. Cleaning supplies bought in bulk to disinfect as a precaution. An individual with ties to both Our Lady Queen of Martyrs Catholic Academy in Forest Hills and American Martyrs Church in Bayside has a suspected case of coronavirus. Key word here is suspected. Uh, we have not received any confirmation from the New York City Department of Health or the New York State Department of Health. Dr. Tom Chad Zuko is the superintendent of schools for the Brooklyn Diocese. In a letter from the Academy's principal, the individual is recovering and doing well and has not been at the school in two weeks. The incubation period had come and gone and there are no, at this point, uh, any repercussions or any children or faculty or staff that have any symptoms. Our Lady Queen of Martyrs is closed today and tomorrow for cleaning. Meanwhile, American Martyrs Church is taking action to ensure safety. Pastor Father Frank Swartz says the same individual was last seen at the Bayside Parish Saturday. We have canceled all activities except for the weekend masses uh, here in this building, um, and we're going to do a thorough cleaning. Queens residents we spoke with have mixed reactions about the new precautions. Everybody else is doing its protection protecting the public. We've had much more serious illnesses in the city. The steps that are being taken now to combat an illness with a very low mortality rate just seem, in one word, excessive. We have to be very careful. And Superintendent Dr. Ch Tom Chadzuko says they're looking into the possibility of distant learning for Catholic academies throughout the Brooklyn Diocese, but again, there are no immediate plans to close. In Forest Hills, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News. Christine, back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Governments around the world are taking extraordinary steps to slow the virus down. President Trump announced a temporary ban on flights from Europe. Daryl Forges is at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in Atlanta with the very latest. Americans are still traveling for now. This virus, we have to be safe, but we still want to travel. Got some gloves, 
you know, trying to stay away from a lot of people, you know, just being mindful of being cautious. This after President Trump on Wednesday announced restrictions on travel from Europe to the U.S. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. But the president's initial announcement later required some important corrections. The travel suspension doesn't apply to all of Europe. It applies only to 26 countries, including France, Germany and hard hit Italy, not the UK and Ireland. American citizens, permanent residents and some of their family members can still travel home. Vice President Mike Pence Thursday morning added Americans coming home will be funneled through 13 different airports. They'll be screened and then we're going to ask every American and legal resident returning to the United States to self-quarantine for 14 days. The restrictions still causing concerns for Americans returning from abroad. I was pretty nervous about not being able to go home. Daryl Forges, Currents News. Wall Street showed it remains uncertain about the continuing economic impact of the coronavirus. The three major indexes ended the day in the red. The Dow ended down over 2,350 to close at 21,200. The Nasdaq was off 750 points, finishing at 7,201. And the S&P dropped 260 points to end the day at 2480. And President Donald Trump may have been exposed to the coronavirus, but he says he's not concerned. The Brazilian press secretary who met the president over the weekend at his Mar-a-Lago resort has tested positive for the virus. That's according to an official statement from the Brazilian president's office. The man stood next to Trump and Vice President Mike Pence for a photo, which he posted on Instagram. But aside from that, the White House says neither Trump nor Pence had any other interaction with the man. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in self-isolation after his wife came down with flu-like symptoms. Just a day after outlining his country's response to the outbreak, he is working from home. His wife Sophie just returned from London and is being tested for COVID-19. One of the latest to fall victim to the coronavirus, actor Tom Hanks and wife Rita Wilson. The Christian couple confirmed they tested positive while in Australia for the pre-production of an untitled Elvis Presley film. Hanks and Wilson are in stable condition while in isolation at a Queensland hospital. In a statement, they say they are fully cooperating with the country's medical requirements. The NBA has decided to suspend its season. This after at least two professional basketball players tested positive. The affected players are on the Utah Jazz. The NHL has decided to follow suit, saying in a statement, since its teams share many locker rooms with the NBA players, it seems likely that a member of the NHL community would test positive at some point. The Archdiocese of Seattle has suspended all public masses. Despite our best efforts, this epidemic is going to continue to spread. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing everything we possibly can to restrict the spread of this virus and of this epidemic. Archbishop Paul Achen posted this video online saying this is out of an extreme measure of caution, telling parishioners the archdiocese wants to do its part to prevent the spread of coronavirus. At least 31 people have died in the state of Washington and some 375 have tested positive for the virus. Pope Francis is supporting the measures taken by the Italian government, the pontiff offering his prayers as he celebrated mass without pilgrims at the Casa Santa Marta. Io vorrei chiedervi di pregare per le autorità. Loro devono decidere e tante volte decidere su misure che non piacciono al popolo, che si sentano accompagnati This message comes as Pope Francis sent out a video to the Diocese of Rome entrusting the city to the Blessed Mother during the outbreak. But the Pope isn't just offering prayers. He's donated 100,000 euros to Italian Caritas as a sign of solidarity. The donation is meant to help the organization provide essential services to the poor and homeless during the coronavirus crisis. In Washington, starting today, Congress is stopping public access to the U.S. Capitol for the rest of the month. Capitol tours are now on hold. Only congressional members, their staff and the press will be allowed access. And the White House is also temporarily canceling tours until further notice.
It's finally official. As expected, Senator Bernie Sanders has won the California primary. This news comes after former Vice President Joe Biden swept the lion's share of state contests over the past two weeks. Sanders says he will stay in the race and plans to appear at the Democratic debate against Biden on Sunday. Poll after poll, including exit polls, show that a strong majority of the American people support our progressive agenda. Sanders added that his campaign has won the ideological debate, but is losing the debate over electability. And he says he disagrees that Biden is the stronger candidate to take on President Trump. Meanwhile, the Democratic National Committee says Sunday's debate will be held without an audience because of the coronavirus threat. Catholic voters are making their voices heard in a new poll about President Trump. The data collected by Pew Research Center shows two-thirds of white Catholics say Trump fights for what I believe in. Another 68 percent agreed that intelligent is a fairly good descriptor for the president. That number dropped among Hispanic Catholics, only 44 percent. Furthermore, 56 percent of Hispanic Catholics believe he is fairly prejudiced. There's a lot more news headed your way. Our exclusive coverage from Nashville continues with the story of volunteers from Catholic Charities and how they are helping those hit hard by deadly tornadoes. The parents of St. John Paul II are now a step closer on the path to sainthood. And a happy ending thanks to a good Samaritan after money raised for a Girl Scout troop was stolen. Do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at desalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. They had nothing. They lost everything they had. The fury of the tornadoes struck with little warning in the middle of the night, causing enormous destruction. And tonight, Nashville and the surrounding region is facing the possibility of more dangerous weather. In the days since the twisters devoured everything in its path, there's been an outpouring of love and support. Volunteers in record numbers stepping up. Emily Druby has more of our exclusive coverage from Nashville, where Catholic Charities is helping those affected. They're my neighbors are gone. Roofs blown off buildings, trees ripped from the ground, homes torn from their foundation. That's the view Patrice Sherrill sees when she looks out her backyard. My little millennial across the street right out there, he says, what do we do? I said, call your mama. Patrice's North Nashville neighborhood was one of the hardest hit by the tornadoes. Well, I was in the front room watching TV on the couch when the front, all that went up. Yeah, it picked it up and set it back down right now. All I heard was explosions. The winds were so strong, debris shot through her home like a bullet, past her drywall, down the hallway, and out the other side. Her roof was also badly damaged. That's what woke me up. So when you woke up, the roof was? Yeah, she was up, and I went that way. Patrice has decided to stay in her home, but many of her neighbors don't have that option. For some of these other people, it's just really heartbreaking. Misty Roberts volunteers for the Magruder Family Resource Center in North Nashville, operated by Catholic Charities. I've seen a lot of people with their children come in that would, you know, they had nothing. They lost everything they had. She estimates they've helped about 2,000 people in just one day after the storm. In the historically African American neighborhood of North Nashville, there's an extra layer of fear added to the already devastating tornado destruction. Gentrification has recently been creeping into to the neighborhood, some fearful this disaster could speed up that process. And some people like our renters and they might not find a place to stay in Nashville. They probably might have to go to Clarksville, some other county. Uncertainty, fear and devastation. The new normal for this neighborhood in Nashville, Tennessee. Emily Druby, Currents News. Stay with Currents News for more of Emily's exclusive coverage from Nashville, including a story of how the youngest in the community are contributing to the rebuilding effort. Be sure to keep watching. Cardinal George Pell will have to wait even longer to know whether he will be free. Australia's highest court has decided to hold their decision as they consider whether to even allow the ex-Vatican treasurer's latest appeal. Pell has already served one year into his six-year prison sentence after he was convicted of molesting two choir boys. 
Judges did not specify when a decision would be handed down. The parents of St. John Paul II are a step closer to becoming saints themselves. The Archbishop of Krakow has announced the Archdiocese has opened beatification processes for Carol and Amelia Wojtyła. This means the Vatican is letting the Polish bishops proceed with their investigation into the life and legacy of John Paul II's mom and dad. They're credited with strongly influencing the spiritual and intellectual development of the future pope. After enough evidence of their heroic virtue has been gathered, it will be submitted to the Vatican for approval, which could lead to them being declared venerable. A Jesuit priest is following in the path of Jesus, teaching carpentry to students from around the world. We take a look back at this Currents News report filed by our Tim Harfman, who caught up with the Jesuit on how he is helping to build God's kingdom one nail at a time. This missionary is on a new mission. Father Terence Curry is sanding and sawing spirituality in Brooklyn. For me, the encounter with God really is in the process of making, of encountering the materials, that the stuff of creation. The Jesuit priest is an architect and started ministering in the Brooklyn Diocese last summer. When he's not serving in parishes, he's hard at work designing furniture in his Sunset Park studio. Father Curry's 35-year ministry includes teaching architecture around the world, including China, where communism forced the priest to be referred to as Professor Curry. Yet he found ways of instilling splinters of scripture. I have them look at some materials and I say, okay, rather than starting with a concept about function and about form, why don't you encounter the materials and see what the materials inspire? Should I do a golden section? Former students like Chao Yuan Wu are now visiting the crafty cleric in Brooklyn and says he understands what Father Curry was trying to teach him. I feel it was something that's much bigger than I am. It is a pursuit of something that is uh, greater than one person's. Father Curry's hoping to bring those teachings to the Brooklyn Diocese. He's still building prototypes and looking for clients, but he remains inspired by Christ, the real architect. The dining room table is, is an altar, right? Uh, the altar is a dining room table. Carving Catholicism in his saw-dusted studio. In Sunset Park, Brooklyn, Tim Harfman, Currents News. It's a unique star, one that's never been seen before. Amateur astronomers were the first to find the teardrop-shaped star. It's about 1,500 light years away from Earth. The star is nearly twice the size of our sun and is pulsating on one side, giving it that teardrop shape. Up next on Currents News, the story of Brooklyn-born Dorothy Day, the Catholic convert and social activist, is the subject of a new documentary. We'll speak, speak with the filmmaker. And if you build it, they will come. How a very special Boy Scout troop became a reality and is now changing lives. We'll be right back. Well, I think if you take the Lord's words, you'll find they're pretty rigorous. Dorothy Day, a great Catholic born in Brooklyn, is the focus of an award-winning documentary airing nationwide on PBS. Before the film's on-air debut, I spoke with filmmaker Martin Doblemeyer, the creative force behind Revolution of the Heart, the Dorothy Day story. Known for producing profiles of significant people of faith, he tells me why he decided to tackle the life of Dorothy Day. Well, I think she really is one of the most fascinating, compelling, and inspiring figures of the 20th century. I mean, she begins her life as a, a communist because she wants to help the masses who are in poverty. She sees that as the way to do it. Then she converts to the Catholic faith. She rolls the Catholic social traditions and teachings into that, uh, begins a newspaper so that she can speak truth to power. And then from the newspaper launches the series of homes called Houses of Hospitality, where she's just taking care of the basic needs of feeding people, providing clothing and shelter for them, and the houses just take off. It's the Depression, the Great Depression right. in the 1930s. And there are literally millions of people who are not being cared for. And she says, well, where is the Catholic Church? Right. Why isn't the church doing this? I'll do this. And we're going to call it the Catholic Worker. It's both a paper, a newspaper, to speak truth to power, and the Houses of Hospitality, so she could actually just simply take care of the most acute needs she saw in all the people around her. Wow. And to me that's a great story. Yeah, absolutely. And while creating the documentary you spoke to some famous people about Dorothy Day. Let's listen into some of that. 
We'd love to see Dorothy made a saint. Some of the most profound and most rewarding demonstrations that culminated in arrests were with the Catholic worker community. Yeah, Dorothy Day is a big troublemaker. What was the most interesting thing you discovered about Dorothy Day? Well, I think that, uh, well, first of all, her commitment. Imagine a woman in 1933 deciding that she's going to open up the door and take care of thousands of people <laughs> and feed them. Uh, but on the other side, I have to say, too, that this is the, this is the 2020 election cycle. And so Dorothy Day, uh, 100 years ago, decided that she was going to go out and campaign <laughs> for the right for women to vote. Wow. She gets put in jail for doing that because there was still such a resistance to women voting. Mm -hmm. She gets put in jail, beaten while she's in jail, mm. and yet at the same time, when it's all over with, she never voted. Oh. Well, that's the, that, to me, it's one of the great <laughs> ironies. When I, asked the, when I asked the grandchildren, well, why was that possible? Yeah. Uh, they said, well, she was at, at heart an anarchist, so she couldn't always be speaking truth to power right. in, in, in the way that America was behaving or failure, uh, the failures of America to behave properly as a moral nation, mm -hmm. and at the same time, go ahead and vote. Yeah, she was a controversial person for many Catholic leaders, yet when she died, some bishops attended her funeral. So how and why did the reaction to Dorothy Day evolve over time? Well, I think it's, it's safer to look at saints through an historic lens than it is when they're right up next to you and close to you because the role of a saint, I think, in every culture is to challenge us, to make us aware of the things that we're not doing that we should be doing in the name of Jesus Christ. The be to actually faithfully live the Beatitudes. And for me, she put a lot of people, uh, she unnerved a lot of people. She just did. So there were a lot of occasions over the course of her lifetime that she ran up against the Catholic Church, formally against the Catholic Church. But now you look at her from 40 years later. She passes away in 1980. And now we are 40 years later, and she's already been named a servant of God. So she's already on that first track to being named a saint. And the people that I talk to say it's very likely she may well enter that second category of venerable by uh, the end of this year or the beginning of 2021. So that's a remarkable turnaround. Absolutely. So how can people see the film? Uh, simply go to Journey Films, J-O-U-R-N-E-Y, mm -hmm. journeyfilms.com. All right, great. Revolution of the Heart, the Dorothy Day story. Filmmaker Martin Dovelmeyer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now to the story of probably the most expensive Girl Scout cookie purchase ever. A Good Samaritan anonymously donated $1,500 after a robber stole the money from a mom helping her seven-year-old daughter sell cookies in D.C. She had put the cash in her minivan when the thief reached in and took it. After her story was shared on TV, a military man in Maryland decided he wanted to help. I had a angel come to me and said, I'm so sorry what happened to you. Tracy says she will now sell cookies in front of her home next week, and she's keeping the money in a fanny pack. And finally tonight, from the Girl Scouts to the Boy Scouts, this is the story of a very special troop in Montana. A father there didn't want his son, who has autism, to miss out on being a scout. So he created his own troop, one specifically for kids with special needs. The scouts range in disability from nonverbal autism to ADHD. He never thought it was possible for, for his son Aiden to be in scouting. We wanted to form a troop where kids can work at their own pace with no problems. And if the troop has more interests, they might create a troop specifically for girls with disabilities. That is Current News. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.